Hey everybody, uh, let's talk hay storage. I don't have enough of it and it's a problem. So when I'm thinking about how I would design my hay storage for the future, uh, the first thing I think about is barn fires. Uh, I don't know if many homesteaders and farmers know this. It's uh, one of the steepest learning curves if you don't. I wouldn't want to go through it, but uh, hay is really friggin' flammable. Um, if hay is uh, cut and baled above 20% moisture, then it can spontaneously combust. Um, the hay will start to grow uh, mesophiliac bacteria, which are bacteria that like being warm. <laughs> they uh, grow in warm temperatures. And uh, these bacteria will release heat. And uh, at moisture levels greater than 20%, um, they will create very high internal temperatures inside your hay bales. And the temperatures can get up to 130 and 140 degrees, and uh, that's where it gets really dangerous. Um, in that range, the bacteria will, will die off and the temp can decrease, but not if the moisture level is higher than 20%. In that case, then thermophilic bacteria heat-loving bacteria will start to grow, and that will create a chain reaction um, where gases can be released, and uh, the internal temperature of the bale can get up to over 170 degrees. Uh, excuse my itching and bleeding all over the place. I just moved the goat fence, and uh, I'm all bitten by things and stuck with prickers right now. Ah, mm -hmm. the higher the moisture content of the hay bale, the longer it's going to remain at a high temp when it's drying and, and curing. Um, so, if there's enough moisture for the mesophilic bacteria to create a breeding ground for thermophilic bacteria, they multiply and uh, can produce these spontaneous combustion scenarios where you see barns go up in flames. And uh, that's really, really bad. Um, another big factor is uh, where you store the hay, which is why I'm going over this in my head before I try to think of some sort of future place for hay storage. Go away, bug. I'm really not that into you. Um, ventilation and airflow around your stacks. How high they're stacked in a building and how densely they're stacked. Uh, all matters in terms of flammability and overheating. Uh, if you're baling hay, you want to do it with a slight wind and a humidity of less than 50%. And uh, if I get a tractor and was baling my own hay, which has been the plan for years and still is the plan, but isn't financially in motion yet, you want a nice day with wind and less than 50% humidity baling hay. And uh, just to let it dry on the field um, for more than a day, I would anyway. <sighs> you want to bale later in the day because in the morning uh, there's dew all over the grass and that increases the moisture content. And, uh, obviously you want to store your hay in a weathertight place where rain and water can't get to it and nothing can drip on it. And uh, off the ground where moisture can't be absorbed into the hay bale. So on gravel or up on on the wood floor of a barn, I guess, or on pallets. Uh, to be really safe, you can get one of those uh, commercial thermometers, uh, like a candy thermometer, but 
maybe longer so you can check the internal temperature of the hay bale. Because if it goes up to 150 degrees internally, there is danger, danger, and you need to unstack your hay and uh, put it out where it can get more air around it. If the temperature is above 150 degrees, you need to check it uh, every two hours for weeks, <laughs> maybe months, with a temperature gauge. And if it goes up to 175 degrees inside your hay bales, you need to call the friggin' fire department and have them come and help you get it the hell out of your barn or storage area because it can go up in flames. And uh, that's a really, really dangerous situation. In fact, uh, if you have tons of hay stored and people are climbing around on it, you don't want that because the middle of the bale here can actually have burnout areas where it can burn out where you can't see it on the outside and someone can fall through that and actually get trapped in a spontaneous combustion situation inside a hayloft, uh, which is just as terrifying as it sounds. So, uh, I guess the rule of thumb is you, you want to make sure that your hay is dry and has a very low moisture content and the bacteria is already burned off before you store it. Because um, the there's sugars in the hay and uh, when it dries, the bacteria are burning up that extra energy. If there's too much moisture in there, create a really dangerous situation. And hay bales are more likely to go up than straw bales just because of the uh, types of grasses and how densely it's compacted into the bale. Uh -uh. Yeah, all this has to go into uh, consideration of design for where you want to hold your hay bales, which is why uh, it isn't too smart to keep your hay in the same building that your animals live in. These goats constantly have their front door open and it can't close on them, and I don't ever lock it because if something should happen with this hay, they need to be able to escape and get out with their lives. So until I have more proper hay storage in a building with no animals, uh, yeah, this small, unideal setup here uh, forces me to keep their door open year-round over there so they can get out and escape. Ideally, I would have some sort of three-sided shed where I could just put the hay in and uh, not have anything else around it. So if there is a problem and uh, really bad luck <laughs> and there is a fire that... Uh, Nothing else gets damaged and no one gets hurt or injured or killed. Because now you know hay can be very dangerous.